badass, right? I have been waiting for Let's Be Carnage for a while. Having liked the first Venom movie, I was like, you know what? They didn't do so bad this time. I'm actually looking forward to a second one. Although I will say, don't think a second one's necessarily necessary. I know that was redundant, but I can't help feeling as though they're trying to cash grab off the first movie by saying there'll be a second one when it's really not needed. But you know what? Venom is his own character. And since people like it, I understand why they would want to take the risk in continuing down this weird, untraveled path. Yes, this is also an association with Marvel. So the movie starts off with an established shot of St. Estes Reform School in California, 1996. We see this young Jude Law looking dude with Woody Harrelson's voice making something and then he gives it to the love of his life who lives below him. I thought this was a psychiatric place, but clearly it's just a really awful orphanage-like place for children. So this guy's in love with the girl below him and he's like, you're my one bright light and they're so in love and then he gets very sad because she's taken away. She says, Cletus, I'm scared and she puts on the gift he gave her. Her powers are too strong and they're coming to take her. She says that they're sending her to a place where there are other like her. Then the poor dude starts losing it because he's like, you're my one bright light. I'll lose my shit if they take you away. And they come and they take her away. While she's being taken away in the back of this police vehicle, she's like, any last words? And then she turns into a banshee and blows the cop's ears off. She fights for his gun and he pops her off in her eye. But she survives, still wearing the ring from her love, Cletus. Francis is sent to a place far away and then it shows the present day. Now she's being held in a facility where there are other people with powers like her. Kind of like a cabin in the woods situation. Meanwhile, the movie kind of takes up where we left off with the last scene at the end of the Venom movie where this guy is going to be a really big deal because everyone surmised that he's going to be Carnage or the one responsible for symbioting with, with Carnage. What's the verb for symbiote? You know, what? Whatever. Of course, this is driving her mad because she's like, no, that's my love. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. We just wanted to get married. And you know, at first I feel really bad for them. And it seems like it's going to be a real cringy Harley Quinn and Joker story because a lot of focus is on this girl and Cletus, who, by the way, is a serial killer. Of course he has red hair. Of course he does. Let there be Carter. Oh, look, it's Alfonso from Boardwalk Empire. Love that guy. Nobody knows that Eddie Brock still has Venom inside of him. Eddie and Venom are having some, some, some pair bonding issues because Venom feels like he's not living up to his full potential, that Eddie is holding him back and they should be out there protecting the city lethally. They keep on playing on that, almost as if that's something like of a reference from the comic book that I'm supposed to get, but I don't because I never read the comics. I didn't even know Venom existed until I watched the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Eddie's like, Leo, you gotta be under control right now because if you want to make us look crazy, they're gonna take both of us away and kill us. Venom tries to hold off. He wants to eat human brains and that's the whole thing. I mean, throughout the whole movie, that's it. Brock goes to the prison so that he could speak to Cassidy. Reason why the police guy, Alphonse, told him to go there is because Brock is the only person this guy will speak to for some strange reason. Maybe he can figure out where this guy hid the bodies. Maybe Brock is the one he'll tell. But the only thing he gives him is a weird message that is printed in the paper. You have a part of me? She knows that this is for her. As he's leaving, he sees stuff that Cletus Cassidy has etched into the walls. Like, what was he given to allow him to etch things into the wall? Isn't that dangerous? Don't they like forbid them from doing that? Then Venom is like, God damn it, Eddie. Let me do your job for you in like a 3D pen painting type of way. And he shows him the place and that's where the bodies are buried. Eddie's life is much better now because, well, he cracked a case and found all those people's dead, buried Mr. Ball and video type victims. Eddie and Venom go back to Mrs. Chen's restaurant. And they're like, look, Venom needs food. It is what it is. And Mrs. Chen's like, look, I can't keep putting the bill. And then Venom's like, then I'll eat you, bitch. And most of this is just banter. Venom just has to be used to eating chickens and chocolate. There's a special kind of thing that's inside those two things that he needs and it's called Then he lost the la la la. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, why that sounds so funny. I think it's the way he says it in his voice. It just cracks me up. It's back to chicken and chocolates. Well, Venom takes over Eddie's body. And he's like, you know what? Screw you, bro. We're going on an adventure. And Eddie's like, really, bro? If they try saving a woman that seemed to have had it handled, they get a call from Anne. And I swear to God, she's the most insufferable person in this entire freaking series. I don't know why she's still in it. Because as you probably imagine, Anne and Eddie are not together anymore. But she's calling him and inviting him out to dinner. So it must mean she's not in a relationship, right? And who would have known that Venom is a huge simp? He's like, well, she must have just gotten dumped by the guy she actually wanted. And now she's calling us. So that's great. No, it's not. Unless she's giving you some booty. It doesn't look very good if she dumped the doctor guy. And she's like, you know what? As a rebound, I'm just going to go with this guy and just wait for the next big chat to come along so I can jump on his dick too. So they go to dinner and he's like, you look great. And she's like, yeah. I don't know. I, I thought it would be better to tell you in person, but... 
No! What? Why? Why? Why did you need to tell him in person? Why did you need to invite him out to dinner, your ex, and tell him in person that you're getting married? I don't understand. It's not like you guys have been talking. You're not best friends. What is the point of that? That's like him inviting you out to dinner after he dumped you, and then he's like, yo, come out to dinner. And you're like, oh my god, we can get rekindled. And he's like, yeah, I'm smashing the other girl. Um, yeah, I'm still with her, and I'm getting married to her. You see how fucked up that is this entire scene had me my freaking oh it's just so disgusting yeah i'm okay i am not okay you could just say congratulations i'm happy for you bitch okay you know what i can't do this shit then she has the nerve to get mad at him and start going down memory lane of how he wasn't good enough for her and blah 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 clearly you shouldn't be with this dan guy because if you're this hung up on eddie you're clearly doing this other guy a disservice and you wanted to come here and just rub it in his face that makes you a C-U-N-T. Eddie, what you should have done is been like, well, bitch, congratulations. The fuck you invited me out to dinner for? Don't you think this would look a tad bit odd? Go me out to dinner with your ex while you just got proposed to by your current boyfriend, you slut? See you later. Eddie is livid and is driving really fast on his bike. And he says, look, you shouldn't be so concerned because even if I wanted to get injured, well, you stop that from happening. So it really doesn't matter, does it? Venom apologizes that the one thing that he cannot cure is a broken heart. While Venom is at the apartment trying to cheer Eddie up and make food for him, Cletus Cassidy, being sentenced to death, is like, let me write a letter to Eddie. He says, look, it's only fair that since you're the one who made sure that happened, taking my life, you should be the one to hold the door on my way out. Not like Eddie he owes him anything but he goes after reading that very weird story about how cletus cassidy offed his grandma mother the dog too apparently which thank goodness they didn't show but it was heavily implied which was like what did the dog do to you we find out later that cletus was actually abused but what did the dog do to you what did the dog do to you why did you kill the puppy i was okay with feeling sorry for Cletus when he said that you don't understand what they did to me and that's why you off those people. What did the dog do to you though? Very hard to have redeeming qualities there when you hurt animals. But Altiori, what about his mother and his grandma and his daddy and, and other people? Does it look like I care about them? As he said, those people brought this piece of shit into the world and abused him. The puppy didn't do anything. The puppy is innocent. Anyway, he was thrown into that awful place that we saw in the beginning of the movie and that's where he met the love of his life his one bright light the screaming girl because the boys were beating up on him and she saved him by using her screamy voice apparently when she did that it didn't hurt his ears so she can control who it affects i guess but then later on when she uses it you know she, it doesn't have the same effect it somehow hurt okay whatever eddie brock is there as cletus is having his last meal tempting eddie brock and saying some hurtful things to him he goes eddie or venom inside of eddie to get really mad and <laughs> He ends up biting Eddie and he's like, that's not blood. That is not human juice. He's like, you've got a secret. That's not how he actually sounds, but you know what I mean. <laughs> why does Woody Harrison do his face like that? Yo, brethren, why, why are you, <laughs> what is going on with your lips? So he sees this weird stuff happening on his finger and understandably he's freaked out as any one of us would be. So he does the only thing he can think of. Okay. Eddie and Venom have a very bad fight. Eddie's like, look, my life was good without you. Venom is like, I made your life better. You were nothing before me. You were a loser. It was your fault you messed up with Anne. And Eddie basically chases Venom away, which is very sad. Venom breaks his bike, since that's Eddie's one mode of transportation, and then he hops from person to person, which is kind of hilarious as you see it happening. As they're about to give Cassie lethal injection, which I think is a lot more humane than the electric chair for whatever reason. I, I know people are like, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. Sorry for all these people who do heinous things to children and innocent people and have them die in the most horrible ways possible. A few minutes of some electricity going through their body is one of the least things you can do, but yet you put them to sleep the way you do our beloved pets when they're suffering? I don't think they deserve that, but that's just me. <sighs> anyway, when they're administering the medication, he has a reaction and stuff starts seeping through his clothes. Everyone starts freaking out. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Eddie repairs his 
apartment. And later he gets a visit from Alphonse here, saying that he needs to watch out. It is weird that Eddie's always at the center of everything that happens, but Cletus has escaped and he might come here to hurt Eddie. This is concerning for Eddie because Venom is not with him. Venom is having fun at a rave. It's a costume party and everyone loves his costume, not knowing that he's actually an alien. And he breaks free and talks about in the mic how Eddie was holding him back and how people should stop the mistreatment of aliens and everyone cheers for him because they're all high as stone. I wish you could have seen me tonight. Eddie. Eddie goes to the old foster home or orphan home. He sees initials saying CK and FB. And at first I was like, okay, Cletus Cassidy and Facebook. And he makes a call to the chief guy and he's like, look, I found the initials. I think whoever this person is, he's gonna come get her. Francis Barrison. The chief is like, that's impossible because I shot that bitch. Then he has some PTSD as he remembers the day that he came face to face with this woman. Cassidy steals a car and he's on his way to go see his girl by having his new symbiote friend hack his way through the internet to find out all those dark hidden files. He gets to the place that she's being held, happy to know that she's alive. Cassidy comes through the vents or wherever it, I don't really know where he came from because can the symbiotes liquefy the people that they're around I I, I don't know I, I'm not I can't answer that he's like baby don't freak out but she loves him so much she thinks it's hot and she's still wearing his little gift she's like oh my god you got like a thousand penises that are flexible and shit oh my god so hot yeah baby and tongues too first of all all that glass none of it Okay, whatever. This is basically Joker and Harlequin and Suicide Squad and Justice League. Like, it's the same freaking story. Then the movie is about him fighting off all these people. Alphonse, a police guy, had taken Eddie to the station because he's like, okay, look, he was the only one who talked to you or you're the only one he would talk to. And now he has some freaking monster. People are talking about a monster. Then Eddie remembers that Cassidy bit him. So it's possible he's carrying the symbiote. And he's like, oh no. He's like, look, I need a phone call. So he calls the girlfriend, or sorry, the ex-girlfriend who's with this puppy dog of a human being because clearly there is really no reason for him to be here. This is the guy that she's going to settle down with because he has money, but she doesn't actually love. And it's so painfully obvious and kind of insulting in this movie. It makes me mad. She goes to Mrs. Chen's store and finds out that Mrs. Chen is actually wearing Venom or he's inside her. It's, it's so freaking weird, dude. He's like, screw Eddie. I ain't coming to save him. And then she uses her I don't really know. Is she trying to do a pretty girl face? Cause this shit's not working. You look like a drunk Jennifer Coolidge. You're not very pretty and you're not very bright. She goes and breaks Eddie out of jail or Venom does. Oh God, please never do that again. These two argue yada yada. And Venom is telling her, listen, I need him to apologize and all of that, a couple, couple stuff. You know what it is. So when he accepts the apology, he goes back into Eddie and for some reason she has to hug onto him like that, which is not necessary. Then he's like, take care of her. Yeah, you go on being the cuck that you are. Both of them are cucks, Jesus. No shame on people who want to be cucks, you know? But when you don't want to be, it's embarrassing. The cops stop Carnage, who sent his girl to go and get Brock. See, they want to have a wedding and all of them want something. Carnage wants Venom. The girl, Francis, wants the cop who shot her in the eye. And Cletus wants Brock, who he thinks was his friend and who he thinks betrayed him for some reason. Francis, having seen a picture of Eddie Brock's ex, she snuffs out her ex and tells her, listen, give Brock a message. Then she kidnaps the girl, saying she incapacitated her fiance. They go to get married, which is their one goal. I don't see how this is gonna work, because earlier, when they were breaking old girl hair out, she used her scream voice, which we quickly discovered hurts the symbiote. Cletus had told her, honey, don't do that, it hurts him. To which the symbiote told him, Carnage, if she did that again, he'd kill her. Which is kind of messed up, because there's gonna be times she wants to use her power. But she and Cletus are so in love. Venom shows up, and then promptly wants to run away because he sees carnage and he's like oh no it's a red one yeah we're gonna die no thanks but brock convinces them because they're the legal lethal protectors which makes no sense that just came out of nowhere in the freaking movie then they start fighting but the girl francis naturally uses her scream which hurts both venom and carnage <laughs> problem with the symbiosis which is strange because I think 
you have to be in harmony for it to work, but they're still having no problems whatsoever fighting. I think right now, the only reason the symbiosis between Cletus and Carnage is working is because they both have an enemy they want to snuff out. His being Eddie and Carnage's being Venom. There's like cool action scenes and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, while all this is going on, Cletus' wife gets up and she gets the cop and she's like, I'm gonna kill you. And there's a lot of that talking going on, but no actual killing. Carnage grabs her and he's like, bitch, listen. But keep your mouth shut. He talks to her like, yo, <laughs> bitch, if you do not, I will. Cletus is clearly not okay with Carnage talking to his wife like that. And neither is she. Who do you think you're talking to? This girl's crazy. They kill the priest and then and, and, and more fighting. And for some reason, even when she does get the priest, it takes her forever to kill him. And then she looks and she sees her husband's in trouble and it shows her going back down there, but she never actually goes back down there. She's still up there with the cop. Then the clock tower bell sounds and they have problems keeping their symbiotes up, uh, alive. Then Carnage is like, oh, I'm gonna take your girl. And here's the interesting part. Here's why the movie is so weird, especially like the last act of the movie or like uh, most of the movie. He says he's gonna kill this girl and then he spends so long and goes all the way up the building where he wants Eddie, I mean, he said he wants Eddie to see the girl be killed, but he takes her away from the area. Baby, that's too much. And then she's all like, you gotta stop him, baby. You gotta get him under control because now it's not fun and games anymore because for some reason, the same woman who was willing to put the girl in danger to get Brock there has a problem with them killing the girl. Like, she's all morals now? Really? Carnage is like, I'll shut you up for good. And while he's wrapped around this girl's face, Cletus peels out and says, stop, you're hurting her. Then Eddie convinces Venom their lethal protector and when Venom doesn't want to fight anymore then Venom's like yeah you're right we are yeah let's go Carnage then throws the girl like Francis wherever she's still okay sort of and then she dies later for no reason like the bell falls on her and then he th 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 <sighs> then Carnage goes to the top of the tower still having off this the, the woman by the way Anne who I can't stand still has an off her he's like I'm gonna go kill this girl yay let me like be do do it slow motion though and like wait for 10 whole minutes until you get up here and not kill her. But everybody else, I was fine just offing them. So no torture, no nothing. Like even if he was doing it to play around with Venom, you don't rip off one of her legs or something or, or inflict pain to try and get him to come up there. You're just holding her and you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna eat you. Just, just waiting one more second until the good guy gets his bravado back. I am gonna kill you though, but I'm gonna wait like five more, okay, 10 more seconds and all oh, the good guy's here. Now I'm gonna kill you. Then Venom gets beat up a little bit, but you don't really know if there's any staking it because can Venom even die from this thing? Then the bell gets cut and she screams and Francis is gonna yell and the bell kills her just like that. And for some reason, when the symbiotes are falling inside of their hosts, they get separated. Carnage tries to crawl back into Cletus, but Venom stops him and eats him. Then Eddie in this horrible CGI is like, what's going on, Cletus? And Cletus is like, I only wanted a friend, Eddie. I only wanted you to be my friend. And then Venom chops his head off and eats it. Then it's over and the cops are on their way and Eddie tells Dan, you know, take care of Anne. And then this time Venom is okay with it because sometimes people from the house, I can hear Venom and sometimes they can't. Cop guy Alphonse is still alive because the girl didn't, Francis didn't get to killing him because she was taking her sweet time as well. But she tried pressing his eye out and all of a sudden he has powers now. Then Eddie and, and Venom go to some, some island to get away and Venom always wanted his feet in the sands. And they're like, we're friends. Sitting on the sunset with that random ass iguana. What is he doing there? Like, all random like, just the weirdness. Then they're like, we're lethal protector. Yay, happy ending. Then they're at this hotel in the post credit scene and Venom is like, let me give you a little taste of what me and my fellows have gone through or what we saw, which I wonder why didn't you do that before? And then the Danky hotel room turns into a nice one and suddenly they're looking on TV. Venom doesn't know what's going on. He didn't send them here and they seemingly have gone to a parallel world where Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is on the news and everyone now knows knows who he is and Venom is like that guy I don't like him and you've never met him doesn't know who he is just just sees this random ass kid and is like uh don't no rhyme and reason just doesn't like him but this guy with a circular stomach comes out and he's like what are you doing in my room and Eddie's like I don't know and then the movie ends it just I'm gonna be honest, I, I am probably one of the very few people who thinks this movie was fucking ass. 
holy shit, like it was really bad. Was it the worst movie ever? No, but that's not saying that much. There was just no rhyme and reason to this the sequel. Like the first one I liked and it wasn't the best movie either, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. But a lot of what happened in this movie made no freaking sense. It feels like they were like, you know what? Let's just make a movie, but with carnage in it. But it's like a Twilight love affair. And it's all about Cletus and his girl, but they're like one dimensional characters that, you know, they just sprinkled in the bad guy as an afterthought for the last act. And they built up Cletus at the end of the first movie like it was gonna be a big deal. And then he turned out to just be this freaking, you know, the, the adult movies when, you know, you're only there for one thing. And they're like, okay, this time we're gonna have the stepsister and her like, brother or cousin's cat and then put them together in this scenario and then in the next video we're gonna have the dog and the cat with the stepsister and it's like bro clearly we're not here for the story the story is probably like one percent of the content that we're seeing right now they wanted it to be about the stepsister and her pets and the story was a freaking afterthought and that's what this felt like the bad guys were an afterthought the dialogue was an afterthought. And then, you know what? I was like, let me just put all the stuff aside. You know, and I don't want to hear that whole turn your brain off thing. Because I'm sorry. If I do turn my brain off and I'm looking at a movie and it's telling me to think one way and then it whiplashes you into a completely different direction, your brain's going to get freaking weird. It's going to be like, well, am I watching the same movie? You're giving me whiplash. It also felt at times like this was a, what do they call those things? Like graphic demos where they want to show you what, graphics cards can do or they make this whole animation demo and they're like this is this is our demo look at how cool we can make these things jump around and how crisp it looks and then they made the story in like the last five minutes around it then there's a scene it's Not symbiotic and it's like okay they have that that cringy ass line in there but it has nothing to do with anything because clearly they are because they're still fighting with each other or using each other to fight the other people what was the point in that i guess he was trying to get venom to be motivated but it's not true. So here's the, here's another part. This is the ultimate cringe fest, right? And I know, I'm sorry. For anyone who loved this movie, please do not take it the wrong way. I'm entitled to my opinion. Not trying to take away your experience. This was just mine. I still love Venom, the character, but I feel like they didn't do the sequel justice, to be honest. But anyway, yeah, this part here where Venom and Eddie go to go save Ant. And he's on top of the tower, right? Now tell me, okay. The movie's called Venom, Let There Be Carnage. <laughs> He goes in and he stabs him in the eye. The carnage bumps him through the building and kind of beats him up a little bit and gets him off. Not like that, like gets him off his back. Let there be what in the Super Smash Brothers fuck was that? Please forgive me if that's something he says in the comics, but oh my god, was that horrible. It it seems like the cutscene entry to a new challenger in Super Smash Bro. Or when you're introducing a character in an arcade game like Mortal Kombat. Introducing whoever, and then they say their tagline. What the f- Let there be and why was there that echo with the lightning behind it? You see how video gave me that looked? That was so bad. When I saw that, I was just like, my toes were curling in disgust. Well, who thought, why did you add that? That was so awful. Oh my God. And funny, for a movie that is all about let there be carnage, you hardly ever see any carnage. Nothing ever happens. It was like this big build up to this thing that's a meaty muscle thing and then there's no carnage whatsoever. They just completely downplayed what this creature or what this other symbiote could have been. And even if the comics were like that, I was expecting the movie to be better. This movie felt like it was rated PG. Just a waste. There's so much else that is annoying about this movie but I really feel like they dropped the ball on this one. And I know I'm not the majority. And I know I'm gonna have those grasshopper people out there with their missing grasshopper legs coming out and saying, you're just disagreeing because it's popular to disagree. I don't see how it's popular to disagree if me disagreeing is in the minority. That makes no fucking sense. I'm just saying I don't like the movie. Was it fun and adventurous and stupid fun? Yeah, but it was also very forgettable. I'm the kind of person who you say, hey, remember the sequel to Venom? And I'll be like, there was a sequel? 
Oh yeah, that thing. It was just shameful and I feel so bad because Venom deserved better than this. And I think Carnage did too. They did Shriek or Francis, the screaming girl. They didn't do her justice. They really built up the relationship between them and try to make her like a Harley Quinn character and like Cletus like a Joker type character, but yet had none of any of their qualities. Even though Suicide Squad was so stupid, Harley Quinn and Joker, even though Joker was like the worst iteration ever, I still liked them. They were way more interesting than these characters. And you saw more of them on screen. As awesome of a character Woody Harrelson is, he could not save the mess that was this movie. The bantering between Venom and Eddie Brock was cute, but that's all it was. The lethal protector thing, if that was some comic thing that they were supposed to put in, it was shoehorn the hell in this movie. Cause it just came out of nowhere and fell freaking flat. It really felt like they just wanted to stuff that in there for the sake of stuffing it in there just in case people ask. See guys, they said it, they said the thing. All in all, I think it was a just, just sad experience. It was cute. I do like how it ties into the Spider-Verse or the multiverse thing. And that's about the only reason you would watch this movie. It, it, honestly, you don't even have to watch the whole movie. Just watch the post credit scenes. Cause it really, you're really not missing anything to be honest. Seriously, you're not missing anything. Just watch the original Venom and just watch the post credit scene for Venom Let There Be Carnage to tie into the rest of the MCU. And there you go. The rest of the movie is just scat. If you have nothing else going on and you want to watch this just for the sake of not having watched it, then by all means, eat your cereal and shit it out and make it turn into diamonds. And that would smell and look and taste better than the experience of this movie. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.